Hello and welcome to my channel and in this video we're going to be talking about the pre-copy script in Data Factory. So if you haven't seen my first video on Data Factory where I showed you how you could create a your very first pipeline I will have a link to that in the top right hand corner so feel free to go and check that out. Now this is actually a very simple pipeline, it's just copying data from Data Lake Storage into an Azure SQL database. So I've got my link services and data sets already set up. So if I just show a preview of that data, there's only three columns and three rows of data as well. So it's just a small amount of data I'm using in this example. Uh, and that's simply going to be mapped to a database um, so it's just simply going to be copying the data from a file into the database. So if I go ahead and just trigger this now, so I'm just going to trigger a first run. Uh, that should just take a couple of seconds to complete. OK, that pipeline's succeeded. So if I jump over to SQL Server Management Studio and just query that table now, I should be able to see that data. OK, so I'm in SQL Server Management Studio, just going to run a very simple query and I can see that data has arrived. We're, we're only moving a small amount of data, so it's not going to take long. However, what I want to do is set this up so it actually, I run it on a regular basis. So if I go back to Data Factory and keep executing this pipeline, so I'm just going to trigger this pipeline again, and that's going to take a few seconds to run. I'm going to trigger the pipeline again and that's going to take a few seconds to run. Okay, so that's succeeded now as well, so I've actually run that three times in total. I'm going to head back over to SQL Serve Management Studio, have a look what the data looks like at the sink at the destination. Okay, so if I have a look at the data now, I can see that it's actually copied the data three times. But I'm imagining this as kind of a, a staging table, so each day I want to load in customers and then perhaps I'll go on to apply some f further manipulation to the data. Perhaps this will form part of a dimension table in the long run. So what I need to happen is something to stop that data. I, I still want to load the data because the data could change in the file on a daily basis. But what I want to do is remove the data that's sitting in the database. Now I could add a stored procedure and execute that as an activity, but I don't think that would be the best solution in this case. Within Data Factory itself, we do have the option of executing a stored procedure. We also have this option of executing a script task which is quite similar to what we had available within integration services. Um, but what I'm going to do here, just for simplicity, is use the pre-copy script available within the copy data task. So if I look at this copy data task itself, and I have a look on the sync. Now the sync is a database, so I have this option here of a, it's an Azure SQL database, and I have this option here of a pre-copy script. So what I'm going to do is add in here a truncate table statement on the customers table. So each time it runs, it's going to truncate that table and then copy that data across. I'm just going to publish those changes now and it will take a couple of seconds to publish. OK, so that's published successfully. And I'm going to go now and trigger that pipeline. OK, I can see that that pipeline has actually failed. So if I have a look at those error details, I can see the error reported is that the principle that Data Factory is running under to connect to this Azure SQL database is getting an error to say that the customer's table either doesn't exist or we don't have permissions to perform that operation. And it's because the principal only has the roles of data reader and data writer. 
So we're going to go over to SQL Server Management Studio and add those permissions in for this user. So the simplest option when giving Data Factory access to the database, and this is by no means the best option, and I strongly wouldn't recommend it, is to grant that principal uh, DB owner permission, which gives them permission to do anything. Um, we could set up a custom role where they've got the ability to truncate some tables that they'd have access to or needed to. Um, because there's going to be tables within the, the database or the data warehouse that Data Factory will write to, but then other tables where it won't need that level of access. So it's a bit overkill um, and it's bad practice in terms of security to give that principal DB owner role. So what we're going to do is just grant alter permission on that table to a Data Factory user or principal, which is called Data Factory in this case. So I've actually confusingly called the user that Data Factory runs under Data Factory here. So it's not me granting access to Data Factory itself, but the user that Data Factory uses to connect to the database. So I'm going to grant alter on the customer's table which will give it permission to truncate that table. We'll head back over to Data Factory and rerun that pipeline. So I'm back in Data Factory. I've got my pre-copy scripts all set up. And if I add a trigger now, click on OK, that'll take a few seconds, but we should find that that is successful. And if we keep running this time and time again, we'll find that data now won't be duplicated. Now, we could have achieved exactly the same with the script task. If I drag that on and go into the settings page, I can set that against a link service and run a query here. But there's a lot more advanced we can do with that by adding parameters and things. I just wanted to keep it simple in this video, and that's why we were looking at the pre-copy script. And again, if I trigger this again, I will run it three times and we can see exactly what the results are uh, within the the database itself okay so i've executed that pipeline now three times let's have a look at the results and if now i query the database i can see i'm only getting three rows so each time it is working as expected all data is being removed from the table using truncate and then it's copying the data from the data lake into the Azure SQL database. I hope you found that video useful. If you'd like to see more videos on Data Factory, please do let me know in the comments below. If you want to check out more content on data engineering and data analysis, have a look at the other videos I've got available on my channel. Thanks a lot for watching.